Imagine standing on the precipice of existence where the veil between life and death grows thin. A man finds himself at this very threshold, gripped by a thirst so profound it could swallow oceans, yet remain unquenched. This is the moment where vulnerability is at its peak, and the devil, ever watchful, seizes his chance to deceive and challenge the faith of the dying man. As we are suspended in this liminal space, let's delve into the wisdom of renowned Muslim scholars and the Holy Quran and Hadith. In the Quran in Surah Al-Ankabut, chapter 29, verse 57 says, Kullu nafsin da'iqatul mawti thumma ilayna turja'un. Translated as, every soul will taste death, then to us will you be returned. This profound verse reminds us of the inevitable journey we all must face. Renowned scholar Ibn Kathir, Darussalam Publishers, 2000 Riyadh, comments on this verse, Death is the reality from which none can escape. It draws closer every day, and at its appointed time, it will certainly arrive. And from the Hadith, we hear the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, saying, Remember often the destroyer of pleasures. Tirmidhi, Hadith 2307, a reminder that the certainty of death should guide our actions in life. Al-Ghazali, Ihya Ulumuddin Dar al-Minhaj, 2011, Mecca, reflects on this hadith. The conscious awareness of death prevents us from succumbing to transient pleasures and urges us to be steadfast in our faith. These profound insights from scholars and sacred texts provide a deeper understanding of our journey, reminding us of the importance of our faith in navigating the trials that lie ahead. As we continue our journey, let's pause to reflect on a stark reality. Death is the great equalizer. It does not distinguish between genders, young or old, rich or poor, healthy or sick. This universal truth is echoed in the teachings of renowned Islamic scholars. Al-Ghazali, in his seminal work, Ihya Ulumuddin, Dar al-Minhaj, 2011, Mecca, reminds us, Kullu nafsin da'iqatul maut, translated as, Every soul will taste death. It's a stark reminder of our mortality, irrespective of our, our worldly status. Then we have Ibn Kathir, who in his tafsir Ibn Kathir, the Rasulam publishers 2000 Riyadh, expands on this. Al-maut haq la mahala min huwa yaqtarib minna kulla yawm, wa fi waqtihi al-muqarrar, Translated as, death is the reality from which none can escape. It draws closer every day, and at its appointed time, it will certainly arrive. This underscores the inevitability and impartiality of death. Lastly, Ibn Qayyim al jawziyah in his profound work, Madarij al-Salikin, Dar al-Kutub al 1994, Beirut states, Al-Maut yati Translated as, death comes suddenly and does not give a chance for repentance. It's a reminder to live a life of purpose and piety. These profound words from esteemed scholars remind us of the impartiality of death, urging us to live a life of purpose and piety. As we continue our journey, let these insights guide us, reminding us that every moment in this life is precious and should be lived in accordance with our faith. As we traverse this path towards the inevitable, the journey becomes as much inward as it is outward. The scholar's insights serve as signposts, guiding us to introspect, to evaluate our lives and our faith. But what does this introspection look like? What is this journey within? In the silence of our hearts, away from the hustle and bustle of the world, we begin to ask ourselves difficult questions. Have we lived a life of purpose? Have we upheld our faith and values in the face of trials and tribulations? Have we 
treated people with kindness and respect? Have we been true to ourselves? In this journey within, we are our own harshest critics. We are confronted with our flaws, our mistakes and our regrets. But this is not a journey of despair. Rather, it's a journey of hope, of redemption. It's an opportunity to make amends, to learn from our mistakes, to grow and to evolve. It's a journey that brings us face to face with our own mortality, urging us to live not just for the moment, but for the eternity. As Ibn Qayyim Ajawziya reminds us, death comes suddenly and does not give a chance for repentance. This journey within is our chance for repentance, for redemption, for realignment with our faith. As we stand at the threshold of death, the final temptation awaits us, but armed with the wisdom from our journey within, we are prepared to face it, to reject it. For our faith is not just about the destination, it's about the journey, the journey within. In the quiet of this life-defining moment, the devil appears offering a glass of water, a final temptation to divert the man from his path. This journey towards death is a path all humans must tread. It is a journey filled with questions and challenges that echo our deepest fears and insecurities. These encounters serve as a test of faith, a measure of our commitment to the principles we've held dear throughout our life. Picture this, Abu Zakaria, a devoted servant of Allah, is on the brink of death. His room is filled with loved ones offering comfort and farewells. One of his friends, in a bid to reaffirm faith and offer solace, begins to recite the Shahada, the Islamic declaration of faith. But something unexpected happens. Every time the sacred words fill the room, Abu Zakaria turns his face away. His friend tries again and again, only to be met with the same reaction. This behavior confounds everyone present. How could a man who spent his life in devotion, prayer and service to Allah reject the Shahada in his final moments? The confusion and worry are palpable as Abu Zakaria regains consciousness. His friend asks him about the strange occurrence and what he hears leaves everyone in the room astonished. Abu Zakaria starts to recount his experiences during his apparent unconsciousness. He speaks of the intense spiritual trials he faced, of how the devil tried to exploit his vulnerability to sway his faith. He explains, as you recited the Shahada, the devil appeared to me, shaking a glass of water, trying to seduce me in my moment of weakness. Abu Zakaria's experience is a stark reminder of the trials one might face in the transition from life to death. It puts into perspective the strength of our faith and the power of our convictions. It serves as a testament to the human spirit's ability to overcome even the most cunning temptations in us in a way now, in our most vulnerable moments. As we journey through life, let Abu Zakaria's story remind us of the power of faith, the importance of standing firm in our beliefs, and the ultimate triumph of the human spirit over adversity. Do not forget to click on the like, subscribe, and share buttons.